Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. Tonight's story is I'm a barkeeper and my drinks are mixed with the blood of the dead. Bye, like I did. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. I'm a barkeeper in a small pub hidden in between the skyscrapers of a noisy and colorful city. A place in which you can disappear and forget who you are, even if it is just for a tiny moment. To be entirely honest, this isn't exactly where I thought it would be at this point in my life. I wanted to become a psychologist. Ever since my youth, when I understood that the masks my mother wore as a child, the mask of the friendly and kind woman, and the mask of the monster were indeed parts of her she couldn't control. When I realized that the world wasn't black and white, and questioning life was a necessity, as I got the acceptance letter to university years ago, I knew I wanted to become a therapist, no questions. Not only did I want to understand my mind, but I also wanted to help others to discover theirs as well. Unfortunately, my life paths didn't bring me where I imagined just like life never does. And so, I found a job close enough to my initial dream. I became a barkeeper. It was a rusty old pub. The owner hardly ever stopped to buy, so I was in charge of most of the work. Most shifts were quiet enough to work alone, and so I never got too close to the other people working here from time to time. I wasn't all alone in this big city though. I had some incredible housemates who I had grown very close with. My life wasn't brilliant, but it was good enough. Besides, what better place is there to practice your conversational skills than a place in which everyone speaks their truth? That evening had been particularly quiet, and so I was the only person at work. I hadn't slept well the last few days, and my mind felt even more stressed than it usually does. I kept zoning out and forgetting orders. I spilled drinks and pulled beers with far too much foam. Luckily, the bar had gotten emptier, and the evening was slowly coming to an end. The few people left inside were finishing their drinks, and would probably be leaving soon. There was a couple in the back, whispering and giggling, as one of our regulars was sitting in front of the TV, watching an old soccer match. It wouldn't take long for them to leave, and then I could finally lock up and head home. I already started cleaning the bar and turned the music lower hoping they would take it as a hint and finish up the rest of their drinks. Do you still take orders? A man looked at me with a friendly smile on his face. I had been so distracted, I didn't even notice him coming inside. He looked slightly older than me, like he was at the beginning of his thirties. He was dressed casually, but had an aura that was elegant and charismatic. Something we don't see at this bar very often. I took a look at my watch. It was ten past one. Normally, we close at two, but on a quiet night like this, it's not worth keeping the electricity running for much longer. Yeah, it's the last round though. The man grinned. That's great. One drink is more than enough. He replied. I got a pint glass from the shelf and started pulling the beer, hardly paying attention. For some reason, the glass was getting warmer. I turned down my gaze, and the glass instinctively slipped from my hand, shattering on the bar. The substance that came out of the draft was not the golden, fresh stream that I knew. It was thick, and gooey, and red. What the hell? I whispered to myself. My stomach was turning, from the intensified smell of copper from the bar. I closed my eyes for a short moment, slightly overwhelmed. I closed my eyes for a short moment slightly overwhelmed by what had just happened. When I opened them again, they met the green eyes of the man in front of them drilling into mine. Is everything all right, old sport? He asked, with a smirk on his face. I looked back at my hand, which was still holding the tap, and seriously questioned my sanity as I noticed the stream of beer splashing down. There was no blood, only broken glass and the smell of yeast. Yeah, sorry, I mumbled. Looks like you fell asleep there for a second, he said with furrowed brows. I certainly was hallucinating in one way or another. I guess I had a moment of microsleep. 
but could it have been enough to dream something so entirely absurd? You do look awfully tired. You know, just make that beer a shot of rum instead. I wouldn't want to keep you up all night. It seems like everyone has already left and gone, he exclaimed. I took a look around the bar, and he was right. The other people had all disappeared. Maybe the couple thought they'd take advantage of the moment to hit and run, but our regular wouldn't do that. I rubbed my eyes, got a shot glass from the side of the bar, and placed it in front of the man. I guess I get more tired easily when there is little business, you know? I said, hoping he would drink his shot quickly and get out of here as well. It does look a little like you haven't been sleeping much at all. Anything bothering you? He asked. This guy was getting weirder by the minute. I didn't exactly feel like discussing my life with a stranger, so I decided to turn the table around. How was your night been? Oh, quite alright. I'm actually traveling at the moment. I'm heading for a big beer festival. I couldn't help but stop at this pub for a drink. I heard so much about the barkeeper working here, I had to meet him. Oh, really? I laughed, as I grabbed the bottle of rum. I was starting to think that he wasn't being odd on purpose. This seemed like a not very successful attempt at flirting. I think you might be looking for someone else. I only started working here a short while ago, and to be honest, you don't seem like any of our regulars. I laughed as I started pouring the drink into his hand. My hand started shaking. I was spilling again. Whatever came out of the bottle looked a little too thick to be rum. I swallowed and blinked again. It was just spiced rum, not blood. Do you know why you keep seeing blood? He asked casually. My heart started racing. I hadn't said a word about this. Look, it's late and I kind of want to close. The drink is on me, but I need to ask you to leave now. I tried to say with confidence, but I had a hunch he wouldn't be leaving anytime soon. A look at my watch showed me that it was after three. This creature certainly didn't come to this place for a drink. I think he was looking for a payback or something even worse. Why do you believe I see blood? I asked. It happens sometimes. Even the most ruthless humans tend to have a shimmer of resent in their bodies. It happens sometimes. Even the most ruthless humans tend to have a shimmer of resent in their bodies. I smelled it the moment I stepped foot in this bar. How many have you killed? He asked. In front of my eyes, I saw the face of a woman, her expression going from fear to shock to emptiness. I saw the blood splashing from her stomach as I repeatedly stabbed the knife in and out, in and out. It took a while for you to find me. It took a while for you to find me, I responded. The man laughed. I always knew where you were, but I couldn't just come and capture you like some rat. I wanted to see what else you would get up to. Should we talk about the people you have been keeping hostage in your apartment? He grinned. The girls who were kidnapped and thought they had finally escaped just to run into your arms. And the two children you like to do little experiments on? What exactly do you get out of that? Does it make you happy to feel control over them? I started panting. Those weren't victims. They were my roommates. They had become my friends. At least, that's what I thought. That's what I kept telling myself. For some reason, I couldn't get rid of the image of the two little kids though. Their arms bruised and their eyes all red. I grabbed the bottle of rum, ready to smash it right into the guy's face. But when I tried to reach for him, it was as if I had lost all control over my arms. The bottle came back and hit me in my own face instead. Oh boy, that looked painful. He laughed. My breathing got heavier. Instead of fear, I was feeling anger. What are you, some damn demon? His laugh got louder. Oh no, I don't think much of those anymore. I have a acquainted interest in humans instead. You know, they are a lot more versatile than I used to believe but I have been finding out so much more about them. As to me, I like to think of myself as a bit of a businessman. Those types of humans have become my favorite ones. Well after psychologist, it seems they are almost as interested in figuring out individuals as I am. 
So, you paid me a visit because you enjoy talking to a killer? Or are you here to take my soul or something? You can't. You can have it. I shouted. He took a deep breath. I just wanted you to take to- I just wanted you to take some perspective. Life is complex. You think you are a good guy, but you've done some questionable things in your past. Does that make you a bad person? Maybe. Still, you are trying to redeem yourself, and I applaud that. It shouldn't be this easy to manipulate your fragile mind. However, we need to work on that. He got up from his chair, held up the shot of rum, and finished it in one go. Get some rest, my friend. It looks like you haven't properly slept in a while. We'll talk again when you're fresh in the head again. I got everything I wanted for tonight. He winked at me and disappeared through the glass door. I had no idea what he was talking about at that moment. Only later did the memories come back to me. When I opened the door to my apartment and was greeted by one of my friends sitting in front of the TV, there was no bruised children, no hostages or victims. Although, he had been right about some things. The children had been used as test subjects, except the ones living with me now were adults and in no time in their lives had I hurt them. I only met them a short time ago, just as the girls who had been the victims of the kidnapping situation. My friends, my roommates, they all had terrible pasts, but not because of me. I tried to help them. The man who paid me a visit in the bar did not look into my soul. He had found his way inside my mind through dreams and false memories, just enough to make sure I would start doubting myself and so he could pull me in. He was right. It was too easy to manipulate me. The thing is, I like to believe he wouldn't have succeeded if he hadn't been right about one thing. One of the memories was correct, but I promise I had good reasons. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.